Hello, and welcome to Charlie's Desk. Um, long time since I made a video, um, but I think I have a cool topic for today. So, uh, my friends have given me a Perkins Brailler to take apart. And um, it's been a long time that I've sort of been wanting to see what goes on inside a, the classic Perkins Brailler. And uh, before the video, I already sort of like took it apart and checked out what was going on. And um, what's fun is that I've been able to check out a lot of the Braille Writer designs up till this point, up till 1951 when the Howe Press releases the Perkins Brailler. And so I feel like I can comment on sort of design changes and what makes something different um, and new. And the Perkins Brailler, in my opinion, is the first Brailler. Everything else before that was a Braille writer, sort of taking the principles of um, a typewriter and just turning it into a Braille writer. But um, so what what the Perkins Brailler does is really interesting. And um, instead of having the, the paper move over the embossing head, um, like a traditional typewriter with a carriage that moves through the body of the, the typewriter. In the Perkins Brailler, actually the embossing head is what moves, which is pretty crazy because it's a complex mechanism and it's moving all the way across the paper. So um, to get started, so on the desk, I just have a, a blue Perkins Brailler um, and then I'll just pull into view the new Hall Braille Writer, which uh, was the Braille Writer. It was created uh, b between AFB and the American Printing House for the Blind. A lot of research went into it, and um, so they tried to make it the best option available. Um, and so this is what immediately preceded it. It has a lot of uh, features from a bunch of different Braillers, uh, both the Hall Braille Writer, but also European Braille, Braille Writers like Pict. And it still maintains the key uh, feature of uh, the unifying feature of Braille writers up to this point, which is the arched die box. I've sort of described it in other videos like uh, an elephant's trunk almost. So this thing floats and arches over the pattern, the, the sort of dowel that you wrap the paper around and it hovers above um, the embossing head, which is where the, the little dots come up. So I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to unscrew um, the new Hall Braille Writer's arched die box. Um, and it's removable. So the, the one thing that they did when designing the, um, the new Hall Braille Writer is make it out of more component parts from actual typewriters um, so that it could be more easily repaired because that was sort of a flaw of kind of these hand-tooled, handmade Braille writers that Perkins had been putting out since 1907 and that, uh, you know, the Hall Braille writer was also pretty, pretty hand-tooled. Um, okay, so I've taken off the arch die box um, and that reveals the embossing head where you can see um, the, the dots all um, go up and as you press down uh, the carriage advances advances through um, the brailler. Okay, so it's similar to a typewriter in that uh, in a typewriter um, There is a key for each letter or symbol and when that key is is pressed uh, the lever on which the symbol is um, angles forward and strikes the paper um, and so this is similar in that, you know, you, you, you create a symbol by pressing um, the keys and the paper is moved across the embossing head, right? Similar to a typewriter. It looks like a typewriter um, and it's called a Braille writer, right? That makes sense. Um, but the, uh, the, the Perkins Brailler is different. Um, so just two more things about the new Hall Braille Writer. So if I flip it over, you can see that the levers from the keys radiate inward to uh, where they are underneath the embossing head. And then it's a pretty straightforward lever. Like you push down on the keys and it pushes up on sort of the piston that um, makes the dot. Um, 
And then the last thing would be the back view where oh, you can't really see them. It, you could see sort of the, the mechanism that pushes up. Uh, you can really just see the bell, which is the other sort of typewritery feature. All right, <clears throat> so now let's sort of take off the, the Perkins. Uh, Brailler's armor. It's it's so the other thing that's cool about the older Brailler's is you can really usually just like see into them. Um, you can flip them over. There's nothing covering the bottom. Um, you can see into them when the carriage moves um, to reveal sort of what's inside. Um, the Perkins Brailler is kind of like a little rhinoceros, I guess. All right now, I just got to bring it to view. Okay, so I previously. Um, unscrewed all of the, the plates so we could see inside. But if you were to be taking apart your own Perkins Brailler, which I'm not sure I'm really recommending, um, there's uh, three, there's six screws on the top plate, three on each side running parallel to each other. I unscrewed those so I take the top plate off, which allows us to see um, a little bit what's going on, but I'll just take the rest. Um, then there's the front piece, which actually has the, um, it says Perkins Brailler on it. It has little channels that the keys um, go through the levers that the keys are mounted on. And before you take that off, um, the carriage sort of release an advancer. Um, that's sort of that familiar U-shaped um, plastic piece that's on the shelf above the keys. You have to unscrew and take that out to be able to remove the, the front piece. There we go. And then get the little U-shaped front piece off that's directly beneath the keys. You have to flip it and um, have already removed the, the piece on the bottom to access the, the bolts that are holding it in. So we'll put that to the side. Um, and then there's one other plate made out of the aluminum and that's on the back. And um, this is the only piece that has some of the mechanics mounted on it. On the back plate, you have um, the margin um, the margin attachments that you can, you know, create your margin and also there's a bell attached to um, the side so you can, you know, the, the brailler will let you know when you're getting to the end of your line. Okay, so, and then the other thing that I had taken off was the, the bottom piece. Okay, so now we're, now we're in there. So let's first talk about the key difference that I'm identifying which is that instead of um, the paper moving over the embossing head, the whole embossing apparatus moves across the paper. So you insert um, your braille paper into your Perkins Braille Writer, and uh, it stays exactly the same width the whole time, which is kind of nice. You don't, you don't have to deal with a paper sort of going out the side of the brailler and you know, bumping into the person next to you on the desk. So I'll just depress some of the keys um, and you will hear the, the embossing mechanism advance. Um, so I'm just pressing the space key over and over again. Um, but the trick of the brailler is uh, the embossing head has to advance whether you push any individual key. Um, in, in your keyboard. So I'm just pushing all six keys. And then um, on the Perkins Brailler, I think the, the, little, the little button on the left-hand side is the line spacer. All right, so you go to your next line. And then um, the little key, extra key on the right is backspace. Um, so, the question for me that I was really wondering about when I when I was thinking about the Perkins Brailler, because I knew the embossing apparatus moved, is how does each key raise a dot um, when the embossing head is moved? Because in all the old Brailler's, sort of like the dot is connected to the lever, which is connected to the button. Um, and the embossing head is never moving, but how does that work in this one? And it's, it's pretty amazing, very clever. Um, what the designer David Abraham did is 
Um, I, I'll flip it over so I'll be looking at it to describe it a little bit better. Um, so each key is kind of connected to a rail that runs the full length of the brailler. And there's six of these rails underneath the embossing apparatus that moves along. And um, the keys are engineered so that when you depress one of the keys, um, it, it rotates one of the rails that is underneath the embossing apparatus and that rail corresponds to a dot. So no matter where the embossing apparatus is along the track, um, it is in contact with a rail that is associated with, which e with each dot. So, I mean, that's just very cool. Um, and completely unlike a typewriter. So what I'm trying to say is this is really the first just brailler machine. It has, you know, some resemblance to a typewriter, but really much less than the other machines. Um, yeah, there's still sort of like a, a gate around the space bar so that whenever you depress any key, it's, it's pushing that apparatus down. Um, there's a similar sort of sawtooth advancing mechanism um, that when you push down a key or the space bar, uh, it lifts that sort of sawtooth mechanism away so that um, the embossing apparatus can move along its way uh, down the paper. Um, and then I'll flip it over. So the other really cool thing is like, okay, what is the embossing head mounted on? Um, and it's really, this is a really funky feature too. It's like a chain. It's like a bicycle chain almost that, you know, it's, it's, it runs sort of horizontally facing you. Um, and it's the, the apparatus, the brilliant apparatus is attached and, um, yeah, so that, that is really funky. It's like, where does that even come from? That's that's never been in a typewriter before. Um, so, and and uh, David Abraham is often described as, you know, the shop teacher at Perkins, and he was, but the manual arts program back then was really um, a lot more vocational. It was connected to a lot more uh, vocational outcomes just because there were many more handmade and industrial processes going on in America at the time. Um, so he was from England. So he was really an engineer. He became chief engineer at the Howe Press. So a little bit like he was teaching woodworking, but he, he had a lot going on. Um, so that's just kind of a first look um, into this. And I, I might make some more videos about... Um, just the different individual features um, that maybe people might find helpful if they're trying to maintain their own brailler. This, you know, brailler, the, the user definitely had a guide dog. And I think one of the issues that it was having was just um, dog hair was clogging up um, the works. It was the, the sort of bicycle chain aspect of it was was full of dog hair. Um, but there's other things that I'm not sure why they're not working. Like the paper loading mechanism isn't, it, it stops rotating at a certain point. Yeah, so maybe people are familiar with this sound, but it's stuck and you can't fully load the paper. But since I took off the outside, I can sort of hand push the, the paper mechanism to get it going. But I'm not exactly sure what's wrong there. So, and it, it's kind of looks complicated and intimidating to be honest. Um, there's a lot of little pieces in there and um, I mean, it's very well made and it'll last a long time. And I think the point that they make about it being easier to repair is more that like most of what would go wrong with it is um, it not being oiled and it being there's schmutz inside. Um, so yeah, so that is, that is what the insides of Birkin's Brailler are like, and, um, it's, it was something totally new. 
and it, it took over. So there's definitely more videos to be made about this. All right. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. Bye.